a Calvin and Hobbes cartoon some years ago in which Hobbes, Calvin's stuffed tiger, asks, did you make any resolutions for the new year? Calvin becomes highly indignant and shouts, no, I'm just fine the way I am. Why should I change? In fact, I think it's high time the world started to change to suit me. I don't see why I should be changing all the time around here. If the new year requires resolutions, I say it's up to everybody else, not me. I don't need to improve. Everybody else does. After he finishes his triad, Kelvin asks, How about you? Did you make any resolutions? Hop says, Well, I had resolved to be less offended by human nature, but I think I already blew that away. It's true. Some of us think we have already arrived, that we don't have any more growing to do. We think we know everything about God we're ever going to know. That would be our loss if it turns out to be true. Get comfortable, relax, as we begin our worship on this first Sunday in the new year 2021. As we begin this new adventure of this new year, our Creator God calls us to be open, to open ourselves up to the leading of His Holy Spirit so that we may be a vital part of every day that God gives to us, bringing the possibilities of that day into real life. So come, let us worship God who grants us each new beginnings. Let us bow our heads before God and let us pray. God of power and might and grace and love, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You chose to become one of us in Jesus Christ, sharing our joys and sorrows, revealing your greatness in the little child in the manger. And so we praise you for your love, which is great enough to embrace the universe, yet close enough to enter each of our hearts. During our worship, surprise us with your grace that we, with the rest of the church and the whole of creation, may praise and adore you, O God, our Creator and Redeemer. In recalling all that God is and does, we become aware of who we are and what we have done. So come, let us confess our sins together. God of mercy and loving kindness, you sent Christ among us to be the light of the world and to reveal your love to all people. We confess that our sins hide the righteousness of your light that you should shine through us. We waste our gifts. We ignore cries for justice. We harm the earth and we do not strive for peace in the world or even with each other. In your mercy, cleanse us and make us new. All of these things we pray in the name of Jesus, the one who has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
The scripture reading for today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew. I'm reading the first 12 verses of chapter 2 from the New Revised Standard Version. And this is that familiar passage about the visit of the three wise men. Hear now the word of God. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The message is entitled, And Then Jesus Showed Up. Let us bow our heads. Let us pray. Abide with us, Heavenly Father, through this time of reflection. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here's a little picture for you. Galileo, sitting in the church one day, made a startling discovery. He observed the altar lantern swaying back and forth, back and forth. Now, instead of getting sleepy, he started timing the swings of the lantern using his own pulse as a clock. Before his discovery, the clocks in the world lost or gained 15 minutes a day. After Galileo, all the pendulum clocks were only losing or gaining 10 seconds a day. You see, hundreds of people had sat in that church over the years watching the swaying of that lantern, but only Galileo saw much more. Aha! That's what we want to focus on today. When was your last aha experience? An epiphany. An epiphany is when we discover something that's new, something that's exciting. As we begin this new year in worship, we hope to have some aha experiences, epiphanies regarding our understanding of God 
Impossible, you say? You believe you already know as much as there is to know about God? As much as you're ever going to grow in your knowledge of him? Oh, how very sad if that's the truth. There is a piece of music from the rock musical Godspell. That came out in the early 1970s, and I know a, a number of you are going to remember this. And that piece of music is entitled Day by Day, and you've heard me use that phrase now for a few years. It was an updated version of an old hymn which has these words in it. Dear Lord, of thee three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day. As we begin our journey this new year, I ask you, what's your ambition? Is it to get rich? To maybe make a name for yourself, if you haven't already done so? To do some wonderful thing for God? Listen to me. The highest desire that you can possess, or that can possess any human, heart is a longing to see God. Now why do I say that? Because of these reasons. The prophet Isaiah, who did not understand the full import of what would happen when his prophecy was fulfilled, anticipated the coming of the wise man hundreds of years before. He wrote these words, Arise, Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. This longing to see God drove the wise man to Bethlehem. Epiphany is the day we celebrate the arrival of the wise men to worship the one who was born to be king of the Jews. The one described as the light of the world. The coming of the light implies that the world was in darkness. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and a thick darkness is over the peoples. When Isaiah spoke those words to the people of Jerusalem, it was during a time of great struggle for the nation. They were a captive people. Their homes and fields were ravaged and abandoned, laid desolate by the power of the Babylonian Empire. It was a time of great darkness. Darkness is a powerful metaphor and usually signifies all the things that we most dread. Do you remember August the 14th, 2003, at approximately 4.10 in the afternoon. The great blackout was caused by a software bug in the alarm system at the control room of First Energy in Akron, Ohio. What should have been a very manageable local blackout cascaded into the collapse of the entire northeastern region and for us here, it took more than two days to correct. We tend to associate fear and ignorance with darkness. But our Bible says that there will come a time when people will love the darkness more than the light. And I suspect that time is closer than we think and may already be upon us. A rabbi tells of hearing a 10-year-old boy 
who was studying the events that are recorded in the book of Exodus. The boy was perplexed by the third plague which God sent, darkness over all the land. Why didn't the Egyptians simply light their lamps so that they could see? That is what they normally did every evening. So why didn't the Egyptians simply light their lamps? The teacher, the rabbi, explained that darkness didn't affect their eyes, it affected their heart. Physically, the Egyptians could see, but their hearts didn't recognize the misery that their intolerance and their persecution were causing other people. The Egyptians were blind to the suffering of others. That's what is meant by the plague of darkness. Now, none of us like to be kept in the dark, unless we're doing something we shouldn't. Darkness hides our misdeeds. Light reveals them. King Herod lived in perpetual darkness, murdering many of his own family members and many, many others. But his greatest cruelty was the murder of the infant boys in Bethlehem in a vain attempt to slaughter the newborn king of the Jews. The philosopher Plato once wrote, we can easily forgive a child who is afraid of the dark, but the real tragedy of life is when adults are afraid of the light. Herod was afraid of the light, and so he sought to slaughter the one John said, in him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The world was in darkness. Ignorance and evil were both dominant as they are today. But darkness will never have the last word. That is the message of Epiphany. The light has come into the world. A student summarized the gospel in very few words. In the Bible, it gets dark. Then it gets very, very dark. Then Jesus shows up. That says it all. The world is in deep darkness. But Jesus showed up. Over 2,000 years ago, a babe was born in Bethlehem. The birth of a child, a tiny ray of light in a dark world. But that tiny ray of light, even today, still lights people's lives, helping them to move out of their own darkness. Father Greg Boyle is a Jesuit priest, and he works with gang members in East Los Angeles. And he put together a team of physicians who are trained in, now listen, tattoo removal using laser technology. The team is part of a program that removes the tattoos of ex-gang members and wipes the slate clean. You see, the gang's tattoo is a permanent message of their claim on that person. It is a mark of ownership and identity. 
laser removal of a tattoo is extremely painful, I'm told. Like pouring hot grease on the skin. Yet the waiting list for those willing to put up with the pain to receive a new identity continues to grow. Arise. Your light has come. Well, what does that mean? Biblically, it means that without Christ, the world is in a dark and lonely place. It is a world of conflict and injustice. It is a world of ignorance and fear. But that is not the end of the story. It gets dark. Then it gets very, very dark. Then Jesus shows up. There's one more thing I want to share with you today. If the darkness of this world is going to be pushed back any further, you and I need to let our little lights shine. I want that to sink in. And we do that by continuing to shine the light of God's love into our dark world. A traveling man bought his wife just a little souvenir, a phosphorescent matchbox, which was supposed to glow in the dark. However, when he turned out the light to demonstrate its use, there was not even the faintest glow. Disgustingly, he concluded that, well, he had been cheated. The next day, his wife examined the box more closely and found an inscription in tiny, tiny little letters. If you want me to shine in the night, keep me in the sunlight throughout the day. And she did as she was directed. And night, that night after dinner, it was a pleasant surprise for her husband when she turned out the lights and the matchbox glowed with a brilliant glow around it. Well, what was true of that little matchbox is true for us. Any light that we shine in this dark world is but a reflected light. It is the light of Christ's love. Until the day when he comes, we all live in God's love and eternal light. We are to live in his presence and to seek to show his light to our neighbors. And then the darkness of this world will be pushed back day by day.
come before God in prayer. Let us pray. God of all time and space, as we gather in prayer, we recognize that our lives are but small details in the vast expanse of your universe. And so we, we thank you for attending to the details of our lives. We thank you for the year that has passed, for walking through those hard days and uncertainties with us, and for the gifts of encouragement and friendship that cheered us along the way. We give thanks for accomplishments in ministry and mission, for generosity offered to those who are in need, and for new possibilities explored in, well, online worship and education and outreach. As your Spirit guides us into the future, our hearts kneel before you, O God. Receive our humble prayers. The year just ending has held so many sorrows and challenges for so many people. We remember dear ones who have died and prayed for those who look ahead in loneliness and sadness. We pray for those who have faced challenges in their health, in their families, or at work. Support each one who needs you close by. Our hearts kneel before you, O God. Receive our humble prayers. O God of light and love, as we face the year that is ahead, we are aware that much around us is still uncertain. We seek your strength and guidance in each challenge we will face. Draw near to each one who must confront illness, loss, or changing circumstances. Guide those for whom new opportunities appear and choices must be made. Our hearts kneel before you, O God. Receive our humble prayers. God of community and commitment, we pray for wisdom and courage in the year ahead. Strengthen us as a congregation to be a committed witness to your love. Help us reach out to our community in creative ways and make us effective citizens in these challenging times. Guide leaders in our nation and in nations around the world so that justice and peace may prevail. Resources to meet health and hunger needs are being shared and understanding and respect will grow among divided peoples. Receive our humble prayers and encourage us onward in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I do hope that you have found this time together helpful and encouraging. And I look forward to being with you again next week. Again, I say, stay connected to each other, but keep your distance. And remember that God is not only connected to you, but that God, the very power of love, is always present to you. Always and forever. Keep your eyes focused upon this child of Bethlehem, this man of sorrows on the cross, and this risen living Christ as you go through the days that are yet before you. Let your judgments go and live and breathe in the light of Christ and the wind of the Holy Spirit. Receive the benediction. And now go in peace. And may the blessings of God, our Heavenly Father and Creator, the love of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit be upon and within you and all those you love, today and forevermore. Amen.